hello. My name is Larry Charles. Um, today, I will be discussing how I practice uh, my listening skills while listening to the Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, speech, uh, which was uh, addressed to the nation uh, regarding Pearl Harbor. Um, the main point of his speech was a declaration of war. Um, he gave Congress um, the specifics of what happened to for Japan to attack the United States, the the where uh, how Japan attacked you know Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. There were a number of nations, um, but I know in history sometimes they only just say Pearl Harbor, but there were a number of nations, the Philippines, um, naval ships off of the uh, coast of California was sunken by torpedoes, um, as well as uh, a number of islands. Um, the nonverbal cues um, that the president gave were it, just a look on his face of anger and uh Discussed. Um, he he talked about. You can see these cues on his face when he discussed how, uh, at the time, Japan was in uh, talks with the United States for peace, and uh, their Japanese ambassador, uh, an hour before the attacks happened, sent a letter. Um, no letter stating that, you know, these uh, attacks, I'm, I'm sorry, these talks aren't going anywhere. Um, let's cease the talks. And then an hour after that letter was received from the Japanese ambassador, uh, we were attacked. So with that, so when the president goes in to address how, um, how the time frame of within an hour receiving that letter, how these attacks happened that notated how um, the attack was planned for months. So it, his uh, his mannerisms, nonverbal cues, was that of you know someone who've been tricked or duped, and all all anyone giving a speech, um, you can see the you can see a nonverbal cue when somebody's noticed they've been deceived. So he expressed that uh, during his speech. Uh, to Congress, you know, again, um, the, the attack was planned for months. I mean, you know, f for some time, um, how they hit multiple areas. Um, that, so that was the main nonverbal cue. Um, some of the listening challenges to uh, listening to the speech involved uh, when the, the president would uh, assert that this would not be st stood for and we're going to you know, retaliate and fight, the Congress would uh, clap and applaud uh, loudly. And, you know, sometime, you know, during the president's, in between the president saying certain words. So, um, you know, some minimal things were missed during those times where Congress would applaud. Um, so this is also one of the uh, things that would distract uh, a listener uh, listening to uh, the speech, um, that was the main thing. That was a distraction. Um, a task that I feel, uh, tasks I feel I can do without affecting my listening of the speech. Um, I feel like documenting, uh, transcripting the speech as that was going on. Like if I was a reporter. Um, and you know, this was back some time ago, television was out, but I believe a lot of people heard the speech via radio and then some would hear it, uh, or read it via newspaper at a later date. So if I was a reporter, um, t uh, transcribing, um, the, the context of the speech, um, to readers, uh, whatever newspaper, uh, I was working for, uh, I feel I could do that while being an active listener uh, to the speech. I know the emotion of the president's address um, uh, would uh, affect me listening as it did every congressman listening. 
But again, I do feel like I will get the, the main points of the address and then um, in my transcript or my writings of the speech, um, some of that uh, emotion would more than likely come through through, through my text, uh, I mean through my writings to the readers, you know. Um, readers would enjoy the emotion of the writing while being accurate to what the president was saying. And that is my video uh, transcript of the FDR uh, address uh, regarding the Pearl Harbor incident. Thank you.